Alright, so now we're back, and we're going to try to find the apothem, which is... Pardon my um, skills of drawing lines. This program cannot construct lines. So I have to rely on my artistic talent, which is limited. Um, so this is our apothem here. And we need to find the value of this by just relying on basic knowledge about our regular polygon. If, if you recall, it was just a moment ago we were talking about regular polygons. And we showed how to find the area of a regular polygon using this thing, the apothem, right here. But we want to know how can we find the apothem, because that's kind of like an obscure value. Like, we're not exactly certain about why we'd know that. I mean, maybe if we drew the figure, we could kind of figure it out. But usually, in a problem, you're just given side lengths and how many sides there are with a regular polygon, because that's all you need. So, first of all, what you have to get about a regular polygon is all of these angles are equal. So, if you're familiar with the um, interior angle sum formula, I'm not going to go over it in this video. We'll probably have a previous video on that in the future. Um, it's basically a formula to, for how to find the sum of the interior angles, like the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees, or pi radians for my trigonometry group. So how, and you know, for a square it's 360, or you know, two pi radians, whatever. So the point is, um, to find out what each of these angles here, which will be important, are equal to, there's some down here, but I'm not going to draw them, we need to know how many angles are inside. So I'm just going to go over the formula. It's um, 180 degrees, if we're in degrees, times the number of sides minus 2, right? And let's just check. So if we have Side three sides for a triangle, three minus two is one times 180. That looks good. Four sides, four minus two times 180, 360. All right, it looks like we've got this on track. Yes, this is the formula. So in this case, we have six, and I am actually going to use this hexagon here, this regular hexagon in our example. I know previously I was talking about some n-gon, as it may be called, um, and I'm still going to be talking about that in this video, but for our example, I want to use a hexagon. So the sum of the interior angles will be, right, so we're just going to have 180 times 6 minus 2 for our hexagon. So that's 4 times 180 degrees. So that's 720 degrees is our interior angle sum. And that's, so we have 6 equal angles in this figure, so we're going to be dividing that by 6 to find out the angle for each of these vertexes, the angle for between each of these sides. So we'll take 720, divide by 6, and if you're uh, familiar, that's going to be 12. I mean, sorry, 120. <laughs> yeah, not 12, sorry, 120 degrees. And that looks about right, 120 degrees. And let's say we have some side length of, I'm just going to say S for now. There's really no reason to introduce a real side length, even though this is an example. So what can we figure out? Well, first of all, we have this triangle here that we're working with still. Oh my gosh, my lines are beautiful. Um, but let's take a look at some of the other triangles. Like, can we find the angles inside this triangle, for instance? Well, if we look at these other triangles here, I'm just going to, Briefly sketch them, hopefully not make them too bad. That ah, wasn't so bad. Um, we know that, first of all, these all of these are congruent, so this angle is split evenly among these two. So we know that this angle here is equal to that angle there, and this whole thing is 60. I mean, sorry, 120, I just gave it away. So each angle is going to be 60 degrees. And that goes for both sides. I'm just kind of going quickly through this. Oh dear, I did one, I should do one again. Uh, this is going to be 60 degrees. All right, and we have 90 degrees here. So look, we've just made 60 degrees, 60 degrees. So what's left? There's 180 degrees in the triangle. 
So the last angle is 60 yet again, which is divided into two parts. Uh, I'm gonna just draw maybe a little arrow. 30 degrees for the little one in here. Uh, we can just, yeah. So now we have these 60, 90, 30 triangles, or 30, 60, 90 triangles, and one equilateral triangle. We knew this was equilateral, right? Well, no. We didn't know that. Um, but we know that now. That was kind of left out of the left uh, last video. But we know that now. And we still want to find this A here. So what trigonometry can we use to find this side? We know S. We know S down here. Let's just take a look at one of these triangles. I'm going to use a different color. Um, let's use yellow. I think this is yellow. Um, let's just take a look at this triangle here. Colors are starting to overlap. So let's look at Sokotoa. So we need to know this far side here, the opposite side. And what we do know is, well, look, this is a midpoint. So we know that this side here in our triangle is going to be S divided by 2. It's half because this is a midpoint. We went over this. So each side is going to be half of S, the side length. So S over 2. All right, great. We know our adjacent side. So we know S over 2, A, and then this is some value here. We know that to be S, but let's not. Well, there's really no reason to get into that. Um, so great, we know the op we want to know the opposite, and we know the adjacent. So what can we use? Well, this has a hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. I hope you're familiar with Sokotoa. And this one, this one here, Toa, that relates the opposite side and the adjacent side. So that's the tangent. That's the tangent function. If you're not familiar, I'm going to uh, erase some of this stuff so we can clear some space. We'll use the white now. So we're going to be using our tangent function of this 60 degree angle here. So what, what can we do? Because tangent is equal, so tangent of our angle 60 is going to be equal to the opposite side, which is A, right? That's the opposite side. This is the opposite side of that angle divided by the adjacent. And the adjacent side we've seen is S over 2. Now, if we just use a little bit of algebraic uh, manipulation, we can find out that uh, the tangent of 60 degrees is equal to uh, 2A divided by S. Now, let's solve for A. So A is going to be equal to, and we could have done this a bit simpler, A is going to be equal to the tangent of 60 degrees times s divided by 2. Right? It's a ratio. It's a ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent. So that makes perfect sense. So let's say we know s, side length, some side length. So that's a constant. Tangent of 60. What is the tangent of 60? Well, the tangent of 60, what's that going to be? The tangent of 60 you remember the sine of 60? The sine of 60 was square root of 3 over 2. And the cosine of 60, and, and you'll see why I'm writing this like this in a moment, was 1 half. If you remember your uh, various trig formulas and identity, you'll know that tangent is sine over cosine. So we can just divide these two, and we get th that the tangent of 60 is square root of 3. And this is being multiplied by s divided by 2. Great, we found our apothem. We, we could simplify this. We could use a calculator. Uh, you can do that for yourself. Square root of 3 over 2 times some side length. Just choose the side length. Um, but how could we generalize this? How did we find 60? So we got 60 out of first finding the interior angle sum. So what was the formula for that? We had 180 times the number of sides, which we said was n minus 2. If I wrote s minus 2 earlier, I do apologize. Times fn minus 2. 
and then we had to divide that among how many sides there were, how many vertexes there were. So we divided that by how many were there? N. All right. Great. So now we found uh, each uh, the angle for each side. But then we made the argument, all these triangles are congruent, the ones next to each other. So if we want to find the angle in one of these triangles, even if we had, say, a pentagon, I'm going to just draw a little pentagon here. We would have some angle here, but we'd still cut it in half right? We'd still cut it in half like that. So we made the argument that we divide by 2 to find that little 60 angle that we did for this one. All right, so we have this, and then we need to divide by 2, so we can multiply the denominator by 2. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. And then what did we do? We found the tangent of that angle, so we do tangent of the entire thing, and then we multiply by s over 2, the side length divided by 2. So s divided by 2. And there it is. Using a nice example and some reasoning, we're able to solve for a formula that relates the number of sides, n sides, and s side length. That's not really the most intuitive notation, but whatever. And that's all, just to find our little apothem here, which we can plug back into our equation for finding the area of a regular polygon uh, with our knowledge of trigonometry and only knowing how many sides there are and what the length of those sides are. Thanks for watching.